And we start with a check then on the two teams. England have Darren Hayes in goal, Alan Spires and 14-year-old Michael Thomas are the fullbacks. Mark Seagraves and Simon Ratcliffe, the captain in the centre of the defence. Ian Sankey on the right of midfield. Dale Gordon is winning his first cap at number seven. Ian Fairbrother is the centre man in midfield. Darren Beckford, an athletic young striker. Kevin Keane wears number 10. And Tony Dawes is the second new cap in the England start side. Scotland have Brian Donaldson in their goal. Brian Nelson and Brian McGee, the fullbacks. Ian Robertson alongside John Trainer in the middle of the defence. Tony Shepherd captains the side in a four-man midfield with Derek Ferguson, Ian Cameron, and the number 10, David Winnie. Lewis Muirhead and Douglas Maguire are the two front players. For England's Kevin Keane, Wembley is very much in his blood. He was born in the same week in 1967, but his father, Mike Keane, went up to the Royal Box here to collect the League Cup for Queen's Park Rangers. And Kevin is being watched by a very proud dad this afternoon. But Scotland's Lewis... Many of you may well remember Jerry as one of the first football commentators. England then in the white shirts to kick off. And since you were last with us, we've had a stormy shower. The pitch has certainly been slicked up. And the players, I think, will be a little grateful that some of the heat and humidity has gone out of the atmosphere. England then to attack the goal to the right in the first half. Fair brother finding Keane. England started this season in fine fettle. They won their first four internationals, but they've been beaten in the last three, in which their only goal has been scored by a defender. And for this game, they've left out the two youngsters who were the two leading scorers up to this match. Scotland, in contrast, started tentatively with a goalless draw against Northern Ireland, but have hit the winning trail since then and come here as holders of this season's Victory Shield, which is the schoolboys' home international championship. been able to hear the odd rumble of thunder around Wembley. The rain thankfully has eased slightly. The players got drenched when they came out of the tunnel. Tony Shepherd, the Scotland captain. David Winnie. The tackle came from Dale Gordon. Shepard. 
Now Winnie. Number five is John Trainer. It was Brian Nelson being urged to play it back by Ian Robertson, but showing enough composure on the ball to keep possession for Scotland. They were beginning to fit tidily into their work. And here's Nelson again. Flash of lightning overhead. England back off Nelson. And the header from Seagraves. Brian Nelson with a run that might have caught Ian St John's eye. That was a lovely little attack there by the young throwback. And, uh, you know, at this stage, Mark, when the, when the lightning flashing above the heads, you know, it's not easy conditions to play under. It must be a bit frightening. The header from Ferguson. Here's Darren Beckford. And Ferguson again, just sitting in midfield. Derek Ferguson. crowd is for another bright flash of lightning almost directly overhead. Muirhead has the socks down at the start. Key picking his way out of a tight situation. Beckford with the layoff. Keane involved again. Finding that Dale Gordon had come infield a little. I think that little uh, bit of rain they had just before the players came out, Martin, has put just a little bit of skin on the pitch. And if a ball is overhead at all, it's just sliding right out of play. Pushed by Fairbrother. Brian McGee then with Scotland's free kick. Struck well. Scotland travelled down south on Thursday and the boys had a chance to have a walk across Wembley yesterday morning. One or two said they were a little disappointed with the quality of the surface. And here's Shepard. Seagraves came out at him and made the challenge, as Thomas does to Ferguson. The linesman flagging. The infringement by Derek Ferguson right under the nose of the official. And the free kick was given to England. Here's Darren Hayes, whose father, George Hayes, played in the Football League for Leicester City and Swansea, amongst other clubs. The pass from Seagraves. Now Keane. Looking for Beckford who slipped. Thomas. Working the one-two with Keane. Here's Kevin Keane once more. This is Douglas Maguire. And Alan Spires was the defender who went down. Maguire showed too much of the ball for the England captain, Simon Ratcliffe. You know, with it being so warm today, a, a lot of the young players should try and think about not running with the ball because that's what kills you. And in this humidity, you know, at the end of 80 minutes, there's a lot of them will have the, the old socks down and I think cramp will get to them. What they've got to do under these conditions is try and knock it around, save their legs if they can, especially in the early stages. Shepard going in bravely with the header. It was Cameron who was looking for Shepard again. Here's Tony Dawes, who comes from Sheffield, where the district under-15 side won the English Schools Football Association Championship quite recently. And three of that Sheffield squad are in this England party. England with three men forward as Thomas looks to find one of them, and Dawes, in fact, had come infield from that type of position. Tony Dawes, who attends the Ashley School in Sheffield.
Brian Donaldson, six foot and half an inch tall, and has ambitions, perhaps not surprisingly, to join the police force. Sankey for England. And now Spires. Laws and Beckford in the middle. Fair brother. It's keen beyond the far post, and Shepherd was aware of the danger and covered it well. And a little cushion header back for the goalkeeper. Pushing by Keane on Shepherd. Kevin Keane was a scorer here at Wembley when England beat Holland 7 0 earlier in the season. But they don't expect such an easy passage today. It's the thunder echoes again. A lovely flick from Gordon. Sankey had the strength. To hold off Winnie, Gordon is outside him, and he uses Dale Gordon. Beckford waiting on the far post. The goalkeeper comes and made contact. And much to admire in the work of Shepherd as he played Scotland out of trouble. But it was a good combination between Sankey and Dale Gordon in that England attack, which was the most promising we've seen so far. Michael Thomas for England. Beckford checking out to make a yard for himself. The tackle was from Trainer. and how important it was for Scotland. It's some lovely football already, uh, Martin. It's some beautiful skill. Uh, Gordon and Sankey linked up terrific before in that last move, and uh, I'm really excited about the way the game started. England have the corner with Tony Dawes. Gordon comes off the near post for them and it's Seagraves who was on the far post the number four beaten to it by the goalkeeper now Shepard accepting that he got the free kick almost before we heard the referee's whistle but as always at this Wembley schoolboy international the crowd noise is absolutely deafening at a slightly higher decibel range that one no normally gets at a football match here. Here's Dawes. Beckford to stretch the legs. Robertson comes across. The linesman flags, and it's a free kick to England. Darren Beckford showing his speed again. Ian Robertson brought him down. were practicing their free kicks from just this type of situation out at Bissam Abbey yesterday. It's Ian Fairbrother holding the ball, who's quite capable of striking at goal from here. So too is the number 10, Kevin Keane. Brian Donaldson in the firing line. And Tony Dawes is there as well for England. Keane breaks off. And Dawes places it, and Donaldson is down. Well, I think they had the right idea, Mark, but just not enough pace in the ball. They could have been doing it hitting that a lot harder. But uh, the big centre forward, uh, Beckford, Beckford, he's uh, got a real bit of pace here, and I think he's going to cause trainer the Scottish number five a few problems. It was England's number five, Simon Ratcliffe, for the header. Here's Winnie. Winnie with the throw. Here's Gordon. Tackle came in quickly from Brian McGee. Shake of the head from Lewis Muirhead. Seagraves wanted to get forward and 
the referee might have played an advantage then. He's given a free kick to Scotland, although Muirhead had taken the ball clear. He was in a position to threaten England. Scotland are sending their centre-half trainer beyond the far post. Same for Muirhead, and a fine header out from Ratcliffe, who's had a blow in the face in doing it, and is just staying down at the moment. Simon Ratcliffe goes on. This is Cameron. Beaten by Fairbrother. And the pass angle for Beckford to give chase. And he's left Scotland again. Gordon is inside him. And Beckford tries to find him a second time with the header away from Robertson. Brian Nelson had committed himself then with Kevin Keane unmarked behind him. But fortune favoured the Scotland right back and he makes the header then. Muirhead. Hit by Maguire. He's got the power from some 30 yards. Onto his right foot. A lot of movement up front for England, and it gives Beckford a chance to turn again here. Gordon taking it from Spires. Half stopped by McGee. Now Sankey. Sankey. The throw that caught Seagraves wanting to come forward again. With 15 minutes played. And played in an open, enterprising way. A lot of promise of good things to come. Camera. Spires in sharply. Alan Spires is another of the England youngsters whose father was a professional, Dickie Spires. Reading supporters will remember him. Played more than 450 league games as their centre half. Muirhead against Ratcliffe. Stayed in, the ball rolling actually onto the back of Michael Thomas. And a sentimental afternoon for the England manager, Jim Morrow, who finishes his spell of duty after this game, 12 years in charge, and hoping, of course, to end with a victory. The whistle has gone. The ball was out of play. Darren Beckford can be pleased with the way the game has started for him. Shepard. Maguire. But he was penalised for raising his foot as he went in on Alan Spires. England certainly went into this game feeling that the key to their success would be if they could get support up to Darren Beckford, if he's been lacking in the more recent internationals. And it's Beckford who comes to meet the clearance, touches it on cleverly for Dawes. Sankey. Fair brother. Again in sharply. 
Here's Winnie, who favours the left foot. Cameron. Now Shepard and Thomas committing himself and losing out. And possibilities here for Scotland with Ferguson. And Muirhead beaten on the near post by Seagraves. Nice little move that by Scotland moving up the, on the right-hand side there. And Ferguson, it was a good ball, but Muirhead was just a little bit behind the defender than going for it, Martin. I think if he'd have gone just a yard there, like he could have got across the front of him and been first to the ball. It's Ian Cameron with the corner, in towards Winnie. Then Maguire getting a touch, then Keane for England. And Sankey putting it out for Beckford. This is Ian Robertson. Showing plenty of composure on the ball and ambition too. You know, every year I see the schoolboys play, man, Scotland always seem to have a little red-headed defender who stands out and... Uh, Here's another one in the same mould. It looks to me to be a well-composed little player and uh, tidies everything up at the back, but showed a bit of ingenuity there coming forward and, and having that shot. Seagraves, who's caught in possession in his own half. Maguire. Now Ferguson. Scotland massing in the middle. And Ratcliffe deals with the low cross and deals with it well. Well, we're certainly, uh, and I say we, there, sorry, Matt, Scotland, <laughs> Scotland is certainly getting a bit of room over on that right-hand side of the field, and Ferguson there, I felt could possibly have done a lot better. He just sort of hammered it low. He might have picked somebody out. A foul throw spotted by the referee. When the two teams met in April, England didn't cope particularly well with what was a hard, bumpy surface at Kokori. I hope I said that right, Ian. You get it right before the match is over, Mark. But there's a fine surface for the youngsters here. In from Maguire. And then Fairbrother. England have a player down hurt at the moment. I think it's Simon Ratcliffe. I didn't see what happened to him, uh, Martin, at all there. I was following the ball and I don't know if it was a clash of heads. It looks as if he's had a knock on the head there, so it may have been on a challenge for the ball. He's taking a knock on the head. He's getting treatment from Ralph O'Donnell who played for Sheffield Wednesday in the 50s and takes over from Jim Morrow for next season. Philip Priest is the substitute warming up. Simon Ratcliffe was receiving end of that collision with Lewis Muirhead. Ratcliffe will be desperately keen to play on, having missed the game here against Holland. Shepard then for Scotland. Dawes will chase. Robertson should be able to see it behind, but Dawes stretching out to Robin. And it needed the intervention of Shepherd to sort things out a little for Scotland. Ian Robertson had settled for the goal kick, but this lad Tony Dawes hadn't given it up. Keane. Seagraves, the covering player, and England a little slow coming back and getting caught offside. The clouds are beginning to blow away and the sun reappears. 
Ratcliffe's header. Drops, though, for Douglas Maguire. Touched off nicely by Kevin Keane. Beckford. And now Gordon. Gets past McGee. He's got doors up with him. And Beckford, but Gordon always had it in his mind, I think, to try the shot himself. Well, Gordon, who comes from Caister in Norfolk. Sankey. And now David Winnie for Scotland. Cameron, laid off by Muirhead, it's good build-up this by the young Scots, and a fine save at the end of an accurate shot that was arrowing towards the corner for Ian Cameron. Well, it's a really impressive uh, series of uh, one-touch passing there by Scotland, and finally lets him in for the shot there. Uh, good save by the goalkeeper, actually. But I've been, you know, sitting here watching both sides playing some lovely football, some lovely early one-touch passing. been plenty of fire in the tackling as well Thomas Beckford slipped and recovered and Donaldson again showing good judgment although the ball is still not in his grasp and the referee took a lenient view of that collision between Darren Beckford and Brian Donaldson well, the opportunity came initially when Beckford slipped seemed to have lost his chance and showed Real athleticism to get back on his feet and show again that pace that has looked England's best weapon in this first half. Spires with a long free kick. Collected by Fairbrother. Ratcliffe. And the linesman flags Tony Dawes offside. But Ratcliffe, I think, Ian, had done the right thing. Well, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, Ratcliffe was on site. He played the ball, in, which is always a good tactic when defenders run at you, is to play the ball and go yourself. Now, he beat the offside trap, but Dawes was too slow in coming out. Now, if Dawes had carried on running towards the halfway line, well, there you are, you know, Ratcliffe would have gone on and scored. Beckford wins it back for England. Brian Nelson, not for the first time in this first half, showed a touch of composure with a back heel. He really has approached this match in a very level-headed way for Scotland number two. Level-headed and horizontal at times with the tackle. Clear foul. On doors. And the point being made by referee Peter Tracy. Michael Thomas then. And Seagraves got in front of his marker. That was a bit of a chance there, really, uh, Mark. You know, he should have done much better than that. He's a really big lad, this. He must be a six-footer. And he got above everybody and uh, nodded it over the top. He should really have, you know, made sure he got over it and nodded it down. I see, by the way, he's on schoolboy forms with Liverpool. They wouldn't be too happy with the headers like that from defenders. Fair brother wanting to bring it down, but not being given time to do so. It was Muirhead who was working back. And Muirhead, who takes it away from Ratcliffe only momentarily. And a nice dummy thrown by Michael Thomas. Shepherd in strongly to bring possession back for Scotland. This is Ferguson.
Keane though for England. Dawes. Played forward by Thomas. Trainer comes out of the middle. And settles for the throw. But not for taking it himself. Sure, many viewers remember the game here between these two sides two years ago when Scotland won by five goals to four. Well, you know, I was at that game, Martin, and uh, you know, since then, there's seven of that, the Scottish side who were involved in the squad that won the European Championship under 18 uh, the other day. And I think that's terrific that we can see the progression from schoolboy level to professional level. Here's Dawes for England. Nelson, the defender, making life difficult for him. Scotland getting men around the ball well. And Shepard finding the back pass ahead of Beckford. Slightly miscued. Sankey retrieved it. And then was fouled by David Winnie. David Winnie, who is on schoolboy forms with St Mirren. As is the number eight, Ian Cameron. Beckford showing well, but not matching it with his control. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. And it's still England nil, Scotland nil. The prize at the end of the game, the Dentine Trophy, which England have never won. This is the third year for which it's been competed. Shepard. Your head for Maguire. It's England's throw. They certainly look menacing with their front three when they've been able to give them possession. But I would think Scotland doing slightly better in midfield and keeping the supply down at the moment. I'd like to see Scotland play a little bit more width on the left there, uh, Martin. Uh, Maguire is, is moving in field and cutting the space down on his side. We seem to be doing better up on the right-hand side. Cameron. In from McGee. Cameron. The one-two with Shepard. We've already seen Ian Cameron hit one. But brought the best save so far from Darren Hayes. This time it's Maguire. And it just shaved the outside of the post. Well, I was saying about this lad that uh, he wasn't playing down the left. It, it may well be that he's got a roving commission. He hit that one with his right foot. And another fine save by the goalkeeper. Just so it looks as if he's quite lethal on his right-hand side, Martin. And it may well be that... He doesn't fancy down the left, you know, and keeps pushing and it come on to his right foot. Just brushing off the fingertips of Hayes onto the post and behind for the corner. And the goalkeeper comes here and makes a good catch under pressure. You may have heard Jim Morrow say at the start of the programme that in his 12 years as manager of the England under 15 side, they haven't produced a top class goalkeeper but they have great hopes that Darren Hayes will go on to make his mark in league football. Here's Shepard. Now Muirhead. Maguire this time finding himself on the left. It's 
umpire's just allowed to hold Scotland up for a moment, but it is only for a moment. Muirhead finding the ball tangled under his own feet. Just to take up your point, Ian, about the way Scotland are going forward, I know at the start of the game they were very conscious that the number seven, Derek Ferguson, should do a fair share of work in midfield, which really only leaves the two of them up front. And that is probably why Douglas Maguire is having to rove a little. Well, that could be the, could be the case. Uh, but, you know, I like to see the youngsters. Uh, I mean, England are playing with white men. I like to see them playing to get a bit of width. And this is Ferguson, but he had a man wide who was the fullback, Brian Nelson, and not to go infield, which was the wrong decision. Seagraves. This is Keane. England with men forward here. Kevin Keane is one, and Beckford is offside. There's no doubt about it, although Darren Beckford protests. Yeah, I think just offside there, Martin. They, you know, he was the last man. He's looking along the line, so really he should have been a, a little bit more careful there to, to remain onside. Because had he been so, he was in with a good chance. Cliff above Muirhead. Doors. Certainly the England front players, when they get the ball, will be given time to control and to turn and to assess what is open to them. It was an awkward ball for Beckford when it arrived. Trainer. Shepard. And Ferguson, when he looks up, will see Muirhead ahead of him. It was offside, not Brian Nelson, the player who arrived on the ball. Now, that's the kind of decision that annoys me, Martin. I think that the linesman put his flag up for the centre forward being offside. And the ball has not been played to him, it's been played wide to the overlapping fullback who was miles onside. And I think linesmen have got to look at that and say, well, he's not interfering with playing the middle. The ball's been played wide to a, a man who is onside. I don't know why they put the flags up and stop, stop the move. The referee, of course, has the right to. Uh overrule the flag but so often they do go as soon as the flag is raised the whistle is blown as it was then although the referee might of course argue that Muirhead in the center was interfering with the play but at the other end the ball is out of play from the attempted cross from Tony Dawes quickly one or two of the youngsters looking understandably a little weary as we come to the final moments of the first half very very warm indeed down at pitch level a free kick to Scotland taken by John Trainer. Picked on by Shepard, out from Seagraves. Ferguson against Thomas. And Ferguson holds him off well. But he couldn't bypass Ratcliffe. Even a little slow again, working it clear. But it was neatly done in the end, the back pass from Kevin Keane. Again, Scotland gets a terrific position. You know, Ferguson has got the beating of Thomas. And I think if we give him enough of the ball, he can create some damage for Scotland. It's a lovely layoff there from Beckford for Sankey. England breakdown again from midfield. Michael Thomas has 
a testing first half when Derek Ferguson has got forward down his flank. Beckford. Doors. And it was Trainer who was covering for Scotland on the near post. And it was important for them that he was with Beckford and Gordon coming in behind. Shepard responding to the back heel from Ferguson and responding with strength and purpose too. Ferguson had supported him in turn, but Scotland were a little flat as the ball was played in. It was a fairly easy ball to defend against. Seagraves, but it wasn't the best defensive header. Just a few seconds of the first half remaining, Ian. What's your assessment of the way it's gone? Well, it's very evenly balanced uh, up, up to half time. You know, there's both sides have had some good attacks with some good uh, goalkeeping saves at either end. And I think the second, I'm looking forward to the second half. I've been very impressed with some of the football I've seen in this 40 minutes. One last attack from England in time added on for the stoppage for the injury to Simon Ratcliffe. But Nelson defends well against Dawes. And Shepard launching himself on one of those probing runs again. But Thomas was covering Ferguson. So the half-time whistle goes, a goalless first half, which will please certainly the two goalkeepers. Some fine work from Darren Hayes for England, notably one plunging save to his left from Ian Cameron. And at the other end, Brian Donaldson has given a cool display as well, particularly in coming off his line. So the boys go off for a well-earned breather, and we'll go back to the studio to join Dickie Davis. Well, no goals, but plenty of skill and plenty of enthusiasm. We'll have live coverage of the second half. We'll have a news roundup coming up in a moment with scores and results, and that's next on World of Sport. When your husband's away, it's such a comfort to have the dog around to take care of you. Good night, boy. Show him how grateful you are. Give him Pal with Marrowbone, a meal he'll really enjoy. You know how your dog loves the taste of Marrowbone? Well, there's real Marrowbone in Pal, plus all the firm, meaty nourishment he needs. Pal with Marrowbone. Morning, Jason. Doesn't your dog deserve Pal every day? My new ready-to-drink Ribena, a luscious glassful in a carton with its own little straw. Real Ribena goodness. Now you can drink it anywhere. New ready-to-drink Ribena. Now you can drink it anywhere. <laughs> beautiful tan under the sun starts with Ambre Solaire. It helps protect and moisturize your skin until it's the beautiful color that's become famous all over the world. 
Ombre Solaire, the most beautiful town under the sun. Hey, know how they make Kellogg's Frosties frosty? Follow me. <laughs> A tiger knot to show us around. We take vitamin enriched flakes of corn along to the Frostomaton. Oh no! Where they get that delicious sugar frosting all over. And this is where we taste them. Mmm, -hmm. they're great. Kellogg's Frosties. I'd rather eat one than be one. Planford of Paisley Summer Special. 0% finance on new Katina saves you £460. Ford gives you more. Planford of Paisley ask for less. Well, for those of you who have been enjoying our football today, England versus Scotland at the schoolboy level, will be pleased to know that it's time for us now to go back to World of Sport for the whole of the second half and join Dickie Davis. ...against Middlesex. But here with the scores in all the first-class matches being played today is Bob Colston. First, the tour match, Northamptonshire against India. India, 180 for five wickets. Rain stopped play in this match. The Schweppes County Championship... Essex against Somerset. Essex 180 for two wickets after 51 overs. Gloucestershire against Derbyshire. Gloucestershire 202 for three wickets after 72 overs. Kent against Middlesex. Kent 190 for four wickets after 71 overs. Lancashire against Glamorgan. Lancashire 164 for six wickets after 64 overs. Nottinghamshire against Worcestershire. Worcestershire 166 all out after 43 overs. Nottinghamshire 31, 37 for one wicket off 13 overs. Surrey against Hampshire. Hampshire 148 all out after 43.3 overs. Surrey 16 for two wickets after eight overs. Warwickshire against Sussex. Sussex 164 for six wickets after 56 overs. And the, the other match, Leicestershire against Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, 167 for six wickets. Long tennis, and Ma Martina Navratilova has taken the French singles title in Paris. The Czech-born Miss Navratilova cruised to victory over America's Andrea Jager, 7661, and then strongly denied charges from Miss Jager that she had been coached from the sidelines uh, during the match. Racing here with some results is John Tyrrell. Starting in Epsom with the 335, won by number 10, last device, 13-2. Second number three, Redden, also at 13 to 2. Third number eight, the Ripleyite, 11 to 2, 9 ran. At Haydock, the 310, first number seven, Century City, 10 to 1. Second number 10, Mailman, 5 to 2. And third number nine, Cordite Spear, 9 to 2. A non runner here, number five, and five ran. In the John of Gorn Stakes, one by number two, Indian King, even money favourite. Second number six, My Dad Tom, 10 to 1. And third number four, Cutthroat, 8 to 1, 7 ran. At Catterick, 3.20. First number four, Doubtful, 11 to 10 on favourite. Second number seven, Jolly Burglar, 10 to 1. And third number 22, Rag on Fire, 20 to 1, 12 ran. In the 3.50, where there's a steward's inquiry, but here's the finishing order. First number one, BD, 12 to 1. Second number 10, Romantic Knight, 11 to 4. And third number four, Fleet Bay, 12 to 1, 8 ran. At Stratford, 3.15. First number 14, Gambling Prince, 6 to 4 favourite. Second number two, Flaming Testwood, 10 to 1. Third number four, Hobo, 8 to 1. Non runners, numbers 3 and 6, and 9 ran. Finally, the 345 at Stratford. First number 15, C Cargo, 12 to 1. Second number nine, Little Canford, the 5 to 2 favourite. Third number 14, Chirp, at 16 to 1. And the fourth horse, number 26, Pintuck, 33 to 1. Non runner 5, 17 ran. In the Schoolboy International at Wembley, it's England nil, Scotland nil. All to play for in the second half. Live coverage of that in just a few moments.
Now, birds have taken the tangy, natural taste of yoghurt and whirled it into the most exciting new dessert-tasting years. New Birds Yoghurt Whirl. Just whisk into cold milk. In minutes, it's ready to serve. In four zingy fruit flavours, it's the kind of soft, creamy, smooth dessert you know your family loves. That tangy yoghurt taste makes a whirl of difference. New Birds Yoghurt Whirl. Longer lasting snack. The new Philips steam iron has so many unexpected features, it almost makes ironing a pleasure. Oh, there we are, dear. Right, I'm off. Oh, shall I just run the iron over your. Uh, no, no, I'm late already. Bye bye, oh, dear. All right, dear. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, Ethel. The new Philips steam iron. It almost makes ironing bearable. He stays on his feet, man, while skating the street, man. Because he eats his meat, man. Spam chop fork and ham. It's 90% meat, man. Wouldn't a day away do you the world of good? You could get some fresh air in your lungs or call in on a friend. Just get one of these and get on one of these. And away day costs you less because this is the of the train. There you are, mate. All finished. Not bad, eh? What do you think? Great. As time passes, this is what happens to our most precious memories. We lose them. Keeping them is simple. Keep that moment in Kodak Color. Would you trust your memories to any other film? Don't lose them. Keep them. Keep them with Kodak. Welcome back. I have some more lawn tennis news for you. I told you that Martina Navratilova had taken the French singles title well over here in Britain. Anne Hobbs won the women's title in the Greater Manchester Open. Miss Hobbs, Britain's number four, raced to victory 6-2-6 love against America's Kate Latham, uh, the girl who told John McEnroe to shut up during play yesterday. At Beckenham, Pam Shriver, who stormed off court yesterday after arguing with an umpire, had a happier time today, retaining a singles title. The American girl took only 56 minutes to beat Elizabeth Sayers of Australia 6-3-6-2. Cycling and Yuri Kashirin has finished the milk race as he began it on the winner's rostrum. The 23-year-old Russian, who also won in 1979, led throughout the 1100 miles marathon and out sprinted the field to take the final stage honours in Blackpool this afternoon. Kashirin, who took the first stage in Peyton two weeks ago, becomes the first man to win the race twice since the Dutchman Fyodor van Hertog in 1971. Russia filled the top three places overall, with Britain's Bob Downs fourth, but their celebrations were dampened when Sergei Kadaski hit a car and was taken to hospital with head injuries. Russia also took the team award and four other classifications. Let me just remind you at halftime at Wembley, it's England nil, Scotland nil. Let's go back live now for the second half, rejoining Martin Tyler and Ian St John. Welcome back to Wembley. The band is still playing. The players are still down in the dressing room and the crowd are basking in the sunshine. One or two of them would have got a little wet, I think, earlier in the afternoon, but the thundery showers seem to have passed for the time being anyway. No goals, as Dickie was saying, in an interesting first half, but I think, according to the records, there's never been a goalless draw in a schoolboy international at Wembley. So the omens are that we may get some goals in the second half. Certainly, there have been enough quality in the two respective forward lines to suggest that that may be the case. But one player, Ian, who impressed me in the first half was the Scotland right back, Brian Nelson. And I think you've got a theory about that. Well, I've got a theory about fullbacks at uh, schoolboy level, Martin. Uh, 
schoolboys always play against wingers because that's the way they play at school and I think it's a good way of playing and I think schoolmasters should always encourage teams to play with wingers which means that you've got fullbacks to play against them and I think that the lads who are playing fullback have got somebody who, who they're marking they've got to learn how to tackle and they've got to learn to do the, the right back job and then as a progress in football we seem to do away with wingers you know even Ron Greenwood has done away with them and we've now they now find themselves when they're 18, 19, playing a football with nobody to mark. So they then have to develop another way of playing. But I, I always think that when I see them at 15 year old, that we've got some very good fullbacks. What about the goalkeepers? Because the England team manager, Jim Morrow, was saying somewhat ruefully that since Peter Shilton, which was, I think, in the late 60s in the England under 15 goal, they haven't produced since then a top class goalkeeper who's gone on to make a name for himself in league football. Well, I think that's understandable because. If you're picking the best goalkeeper at this age group, you obviously go for the big fellow. I mean, you're not going to pick a four foot 11 goalkeeper. So you pick the six footer, he's in goal. But the, all the other kids, the other good young goalkeepers start bypassing them as they get a little bit older, you know, 17, 18. They start going, filling out, and then it's down to ability then. And uh, as, I mean, I'm not surprised that uh, goalkeepers, 15 year old goalkeepers, don't make it. It's Scotland who come out first. Plenty of support here in England, quickly behind them. England, in fact, have only failed to score in two internationals at this level here at Wembley, and they were both against Scotland when Scotland won 2-0 here in 1967. 1-0 in 1975. And there is Brian Nelson, who we were talking about a moment or two earlier. He's on schoolboy forms with Celtic. Comes from Glasgow. The referee just checking that the numbers are right on each side. I can't at the moment see any substitutions. And it's Scotland who defend the goal to the left in the second half. They start with a back pass to Brian Donaldson. The route forward is with Brian Nelson. Muirhead. Who's been kept fairly well in check by England thus far. Now Nelson. Being allowed to go a long way. Nelson again. And offside was Douglas Maguire. Hayes. Again, with handling to admire as the ball skimmed off the turf at him. And this is Dale Gordon looking to take on Trainer, who didn't keep his feet but made the tackle. Seagraves turning it back to Darren Hayes. Doors. Thomas. Keen being harassed by Shepard unfairly. Tony Shepard Ian was making long runs in the first half from midfield. Yeah, he's a good player. Uh, he's a classy player this lad, but he does tend to run with the ball. And I would think in this heat and humidity today at Wembley you might find that uh, he could tire because it's a long way to carry it. But again, young players do that, Mark. You know, they, they don't understand as yet when to hold the ball and when to, to pass it. And at the moment, he's holding on to the ball just a little bit too long. And the young players at this level, of course, are always prone to the sort of mistake there we saw from Michael Thomas mishitting his attempted free kick and went straight out of play. Thomas 
though, to try and retrieve the mistake. And now Keane. And look again how Scott the left back, but he could have turned, but he saw Keane up in support. And the ball favoured England on a couple of occasions, and finally Shepard brought it out. Cameron. Now Ferguson. Seagraves trying to hold him up. Ferguson again. And it's still with Derek Ferguson, who was being held right on the edge of that England area. Well, he twisted this way and that to look for a shooting opening himself. And finally, England, in their desperation, fouled him. Touched for Shepard. And it deflected off Dale Gordon. Muirhead got a good header to it. And it was Ratcliffe who was alert for England. A well, really Muirhead. dangerous moment there, Ian. Well, Muirhead's a bit annoyed that none of the other Scottish players followed up, and I think he's quite right there. He did well, followed up the ricochet, and uh, you look as he nodded it back there, it was only uh, white jerseys, there was no blues following in. Dawes. Holding off Robertson. He's got Beckford a little slow getting up alongside him and he was going the solo route Tony Dawes finishing with a shot of power but good goalkeeping again from Brian Don Donaldson to stop it and hang on Ferguson's cross Muirhead waited for it to come down and it's an England free kick or some holding by Muirhead off the ball. Well, the game certainly started off brightly in the second half, Martin. I don't think that nil-nil -nil scoreline is going to stay for very long. Keane. Dawes losing Nelson. Who got back at him with determination. Spires showing strength himself. Here's Dawes, and he was looking to play it first time for Beckford in the middle. And you can see him offer the hand of apology. Ferguson, your head. It's Winnie coming from midfield. Stopped by Ratcliffe. Cameron running into Seagraves but bringing Scotland a corner. Michael Thomas taking his station on the near post. Trainers come well up, but it never bypassed the head of Sankey. Ferguson, leaving Sankey on the ground with a delightful shrug of the shoulders. But Thomas slides in, and Scotland have another corner. And this time it's worked short to Nelson. He tries it on the left foot. I must have heard you talking about him at half time, man. He's, he's out to impress. Actually, what he's got to do there is just knock it back to, to the wide player and Scotland went in behind him. Here's Keane. Dawes took a late tackle. And he's down holding the back of his left calf. Meanwhile, goes on. Draws his back on his feet. But Ralph O'Donnell called on to give him some treatment. He 
trainer's sponge is required. And it's time for a breather for Brian Nelson. And one really can't emphasise too strongly just how hot it is down at pitch level. I think the signs are there, Martin, that uh, we're going to get a few of the fellas collapsing before the end. Even a substitute warming up is a bit cramped. play restarting with a throw it will be difficult for the team managers to decide the moment to use their substitutes because of the risk of players fading towards the last stages of the game two substitutes and a goalkeeper allowed for both sides an indirect free kick in Scotland's favour for obstruction on Ian Cameron Trainer, the centre half is forward again. Taken by Shepherd, and it needed the fingertips of Darren Hayes. And he gets applause for the save from Lewis Muirhead, which was a nice touch. Well, that, that free kick was hit a little bit harder than the last one. Remember it said before he should have hit the last one with a bit more pace. Well, that time from further out, he had to do it. And it's just, it was a pity for Scotland that it was straight at the goalkeeper. The effort from Tony Shepard. Seagraves climbed well for England. Fairbrother helped it forward. England are pushing out. Scotland are trying to get back on side. Robertson finds Kevin Keane. Seagraves. England's throw again with half an hour remaining. Doors. Needing help now. And in fact, Nelson was wild. There's really no necessity for him to give away the free kick was backed into a tight enough corner anyway and England perhaps have an opportunity here that they can exploit Beckford climbed well and it was hooked away from Seagraves as he set his sights by the left back McGee and then staying down he played England on side but the cross went straight to the goalkeeper what a fabulous save that was by McGee you know he just hooked it away there as a uh, big fellow we Shepard was coming, was it Shepard was coming? A secret that was coming in on it. And uh, it was a really timely one. I thought that was a certainty there for England to go one up. I was thinking, you know, that uh, our, our young right back there, Nelson, is getting a little bit upset and a little bit needly. And I think it's, you know, he doesn't have to do it. I mean, he's, he's played a good game, but it may well be, of course, he's getting a little bit tired. And then his, his temper's beginning to go a bit. Well, certainly, Brian McGee, Risking blood for his country then. But as you say, Ian, the danger for Scotland came from a free kick that was given away quite unnecessarily by Brian Nelson here. Well, he's in talking terms now. <laughs> but uh, with Dawes, but uh, the two of them have been having a good little battle throughout this game. And in the second half, uh, Dawes, I think, may just be getting on top of them. Well, certainly Brian Donaldson would be grateful for the efforts of Brian McGee. And Darren Hayes is keeping on his toes, keeping the concentration level high. I'm 
sure his father, George, who played so many league games, will have instilled that lesson into him. Doors have run offside. Shepard well forward, actually came off Ratcliffe. Shepard prepared to try his luck. Cameron looking to play it inside the fullback. Ferguson was prepared to chase it, but Seagraves came across and covered sufficiently well. Mark Seagraves, who's played in all of seven England internationals this season. This under 15 level. Doors. Keen. Nelson. Prepared to pick his pass. Came off Spires, but was enough to pull Muirhead, who had gone in behind him. One or two tired efforts now from the Scotland players. McGee. New ahead running well, but was looking for an ambitious layoff in the direction of Maguire. I would think New ahead has modelled himself on Kenny Dalgleish. Martin, when I look at him, the way he runs and the way he tries to play his football. I would think, I mean, I don't know that, I haven't spoke to the boy, but I think he tries to model himself on Dalgleish. And this ball given away by Keane, taken up by Ferguson, and here's Shepard. Now possibilities for Scotland, who are arriving in the middle. Now Shepard, it's opened all the way up for him. And all he needed to do really was keep it down. Well, it was a fabulous run by Anthony Shepard. He's, he was saying before, he's a very, very good player and runs well with the ball. Jinked inside there, lovely, then carried it on as the whole thing opened up for him. And uh, his final shot, of course, he got underneath it and lashed it over, but very impressive. And all that was missing was the finish. Doors. On a one two inadvertently off the referee. It didn't work in England's favour. Ferguson. Here's Nelson. It's over Maguire. McGee will reach it. And now Maguire. Well, the two Scottish fullbacks very much involved in that move. Nelson, first of all, going down the right, squaring it across, then McGee turning it back before Maguire had the shot. It's nice to see that, Mark, that both fullbacks have come up into attack and Scotland have got the ball. It's a good spell, this, for Scotland. Maybe Simon Ratcliffe aware of it, wanting to give his players a little time to settle. Encouraging Darren Hayes to kick long. who goes forward again. And now he does need help. And got it from Shepard, who had to hold off Keane. And a cross that caused all sorts of problems for England, played in behind them. And it was Ian Sankey tracking back who conceded the corner. Well, when you've got a spell of pressure like this, this is the time to score a goal, you know. If Scotland scored now, I'd give them a, a big, big lift and probably knock England right on their heels. Trainer is up on the far post. Maguire will take the corner. England are making a substitution. Phil Priest comes on for Kevin Keane. And put some fresh legs into midfield. Keane has been run ragged really recently by Tony Shepherd. Yeah. 
And it's Shepherd's header off the line from Michael Thomas. Scotland close again. Ferguson collecting the throw. Nelson was a little flat footed as the back heel was played towards the byline to give him an angle for the cross. It caught sleeping a little bit there, Thomas, with that back heel. It was a nice little neat piece of play, and if he'd been on his way, he'd have been on the byline there knocking that ball across. McGee time for Seagraves and he was aware that he had time to fair brother here's Priest on from Sankey who seemed to be taken after the ball had gone by McGee Phil Priest who's on schoolboy forms with Chelsea, and indeed the young Scotland players were very surprised he wasn't in the starting lineup. He impressed them a lot in the first game between the two countries in April. And this is Dawes. They want to work it onto the left foot, and now Priest. And just fingered away by Donaldson. Phil Priest almost making an early impact. That was a good effort from the edge of the box there. I mean, that was his first kick, it was his second kick at the ball, rather. He pulled out a very good save from Donaldson. And England having been under the collar for a few minutes. Now had the chance to take things forward with the corner. Be taken by Dawes. Seagraves. Got direction but not the power. It's noticeable, Ian, that we've seen very little of Darren Beckford in this half. Well, that did go through my mind there, uh, Martin. You know, the English lads, the midfield players, haven't given them any sort of supply at all. If you've got a player, a centre forward, with the pace that he's got, then you've got to think about playing balls behind the defender so that he can run onto them. As it is at the moment, you know, in the second half, I don't think he's had one pass. It is the England philosophy at this level to play through midfield rather than bypass it. But in their attempts to do that, Scotland are defending well in that area. But Beckford involved here with a pass for Michael Thomas. He will be disappointed with his contribution to the move. Priest. Controlled it well at full stretch, but tried to play the pass in too much of a hurry. But it may be the duel that will decide the outcome of the game will be between Philip Priest, who's been brought on to keep an eye on Tony Shepherd, who was controlled so much this afternoon for Scotland. And we've seen enough from Priest already to know that he can be dangerous for England if he gets forward. Here he is. Fair brother. Gordon's 
switch to the left. And Nelson quite happy to deal with the problems posed by Dale Gordon. But now Beckford. Trainer ops for safety. Darren Beckford, who's a top-class schoolboy basketball player as well. You might have noticed the basketball flourish as he threw the ball for Priest to take the throw. And it's Beckford with the cross. And Dawes coming in, couldn't make the header with the goalkeeper committed. Well, I'm not too sure if the goalkeeper just didn't get a little touch on that ball to deflect it from Beckford. Uh, in fact, I think he might just have done that, Martin. It was a terrific save if he did get a touch. He certainly shook the left hand as though he might have made contact. Priest, though, for England. Fairbrother, a fine ball for Dale Gordon. Priest is inside him. But Gordon seeing glory for himself. Or for Beckford, off the line. The best chance England have had. It only needed a solid shot from Darren Beckford. Free kick to England, Ian. Well, that was McGee to the rescue again, Martin. That's twice that uh, he's been tangled to benches. He did terrific here, the big lad. And that was an open goal. And there was McGee to North off the line. So Beckford obviously a little bit disappointed he never scored with that one. I must say Gordon did the right thing by squaring a ball to him. So England have the free kick. To be taken by Priest. Beckford waits. Trainer misses his kick. Maguire taking too long on the ball. Seagraves. Little Ian Sankey in an unspectacular way, the number six for England, has worked hard on the right-hand side of midfield. But Scotland have the free kick. Shepard, Priest sticking to him, and the tackle that will have done England hearts good. Dale Gordon will be encouraged by the chance he set up a moment or two ago. Dawes, just once or twice, it's been over ambitious, over elaborate. A flick or an attempted flick when a straightforward side foot pass would have done the trick. I'm going to say there, Martin, I don't mind really boys at this level trying things. I don't mind if they try back heelers and flicks and, you know, try the unusual because it's only through doing that and learning when is the right time to do it and when is the wrong time. You only get that through experience. But at least if they try them and they do come off, it gives you a lot of satisfaction to bring this, these little pieces of skill into your game. Now Beckford. And it wouldn't get past Brian Nelson, who was in the right place for Scotland with Tony Dawes in the clear behind him. And Scotland are warming up Gary Riddle. Thomas. It's going to be a test of strength and determination as much as skill here. And Gordon! Another chance goes away from England. It's a fine pass in from Michael Thomas. It was a super pass, and, and really, you know, God must be uh, thinking he's the score there. It was, he's clear through, he's only got the goalkeeper to beat. And he, I think he hurried his shot, you know, he could have gone on and probably tried to place it. He had the shot from the edge of the box and uh, knocked it past the post. England have created two or three chances in this last uh, sort of five or ten minutes. So they appear to have uh, weathered the storm that Scotland have thrown at them earlier and are now coming more and more into the game. Ferguson, and this is Muirhead. Hayes is committed. And when he looked round, he found the ball rolling straight at him. Matcliffe and Muirhead 
who felt the full force of the collision. Shepard. And the referee now calling a halt so that both Lewis Muirhead and Simon Ratcliffe can receive attention from their trainers. It was a really fierce collision there because the goalkeeper, goalkeeper came out and clashed into the two lads as they were uh, vying for the ball there and they landed on top of each other. And probably just winded more than anything. Meanwhile, Scotland have made a substitution. Gary Riddle wearing number 12 has come on for David Winnie. Gary Riddle is a product of Aberdeen schools. The scoreboard confirming to the crowd here of just over 61,000 but Gary Riddle is on for David Winnie and Hector Winter looks across to see whether he's required as the replacement for Simon Ratcliffe who is still badly shaken by that collision Ratcliffe is off the pitch Muirhead is back in action for Scotland, so they have their full 11. England down to 10 at the moment. But Dale Gordon, who's created one good chance and missed one in the last five minutes. Across for Beckford. Beckford again. It was Shepherd who hesitated and Shepherd who recovered. Well, Scotland had all sorts of problems here. But the captain is, he really is playing a captain's role today. He's had a fabulous game for Scotland. Anthony Shepard, and he was there to the rescue again. But uh, Beckford always looking dangerous and is liable to nick one. Priest then with the corner. And it will come back to him. Seagraves waiting beyond the far post. Priest went for the shot himself and couldn't get it past Shepard. And Hector Winter will come on for Simon Ratcliffe with nine minutes left. Priest, Shepherd there again. And Tony Shepherd showing quality again as he leads Scotland's attempts to play their way out of trouble, but it's Ian Fairbrother for England. Gordon. It's Scotland's throw. Hector Winter is on. I don't think the referee realised that Simon Ratcliffe was already off the field. And a stretcher being brought for the England captain. Sankey. Beckford unable to control Robertson. Got it away from the danger area. Sankey. And Simon Ratcliffe, who took the full brunt of the collision with Lewis Muirhead and his own goalkeeper, goes back to the dressing room by stretcher. 
tragic sight for England, but he's getting a marvellous ovation from the England supporters. They're also are concentrating on the attempts of the players still on the field to score. But it was Shepherd who denied them again. Out of play by Tony Dawes. Winter with the header. Well, it's looking more and more as though one goal. We'll settle it now. And there have been enough chances at both ends. Priest to the throw. Doors. But the first thing to go when you feel tired is your control on the ball. Well, it's very warm sitting up here in the commentary box. So what it must be like for those young fellas down there on the pitch today. There's a lot of humidity and, uh, I mean, the game has just sort of drifted away from them, hasn't it? You know, the passes have gone very sloppy, they've got nobody running. I mean, I think we're going to get another thunderstorm coming up as well, so let's hope that the game finish before that arrives. But the crowd want to see them through these last few minutes and obviously desperately determined to see a goal as well. The support is memorable once again here at the Schoolboy International. Scotland make their second substitution. And they brought on Sandy Fraser. and getting a cautionary word again from the referee. Beckford. Now, what have England got here? Dawes. Away from Cameron. A header from Thomas for England. Then Priest with a neat little pass for Dawes. Cross is a little too close to the goalkeeper, a little too far ahead for Beckford from the England point of view. Winter and Ferguson for Scotland. Fraser busily trying to get into the action. Ferguson is hurt and the tempo of the game interrupted again by an injury and it's cramped the classic Wembley dilemma we've talked enough about the heat but when you add to that the tension of playing in a Wembley occasion has been a testing afternoon for these players. Nelson again has had another rest. But the crowd continue to sing. Michael Thomas is 
well aware that you've got to keep the muscles supple to avoid cramp. Ian, do you see us getting a goal to drive a wedge between these two sides in the few minutes that remain? Well, uh, anything can happen, obviously, but uh, Scotland had a very good spell just after half-time for ten minutes or so, where the captain, Anthony Shepherd there, was inspiring them, and uh, they won or two chances. England got over that, and then they had one or two chances and a very good spell. The whole thing seems to have sort of died out, and uh, it looks like it's going towards a nil-nil. But uh, it's been entertaining football. I've, I've really enjoyed it, and there's been a lot of skill. I thought that the heat would get to them in the end, and I think that's been uh, the answer now. But all the boys are a little bit tired, and I'm not sure if they'll get the goal. If we do, it's more liable to be through a mistake than anything else. Nelson takes the safe way out with the throw back to Donaldson. Sankey, who's still got some running in his legs. Here's Riddle. A free kick then to Scotland. They push six players in and around the penalty area. Shepard. It's a forlorn chase for Dawes. Sandy Fraser on for Maguire. And Scotland have a free kick. Holding by Seagraves on Muirhead. Maybe their last chance. England setting three in the wall. Scotland now have the height of Gary Riddle as an advantage for them. And Shepherd. Ferguson the first to react. A miss kick by Priest. Not the best of clearances by Spires. And Gordon. Well, surely the referee had to give a free kick. It was Trainer who was on the receiving end. Gordon apologising. And once again, this match has been played in the very best of spirits. You know, I'm just thinking, uh, I, I used to take cramp as well, and uh, when I played at Wembley, I always took cramp. And you, you've got to laugh when you see other people get it, because it's a terrible thing, you know. You All of a sudden, the muscle just tightens up, and you just you, you think you have two wooden legs, you know, when it happens to you. So Scotland are down to ten men, and John Trainer, they're sent a half off the field. It's a question, really, of whether England have got the energy to muster another meaningful attack, but they've got the free kick. Gordon. Sankey. Now Thomas. A chance here for England at the very last. Priest. And a magnificent save by Brian Donaldson. Well, that was one superb piece of goalkeeping. When the ball ran free, Priest did terrific to turn and hit it through the rock of players. The goalkeeper saw it late, dived with his left hand and got it just as the ball was sneaking out the far post. A really superb save. I think after a save like that, Ian, you've got to feel that the goal won't come. Well, I would think so. I mean, that was probably as good a, uh, a chance as... Well, not really a chance, uh, because the ball was coming through the rock of players, but a superb save. You won't see many better here at Wembley at any level of international football. And this is Dawes. But it's England going forward again with Gordon. And somehow Scotland closed the door. Dawes looks to open it again. A 
And this time it's Muirhead who needs the breather. We're into injury time, and there's been a lot of that. The problem will be, will the players be able to walk up the Royal Box? Thomas. Shepard. Three minutes of injury time play. A long ball forward from Fairbrother. Gordon. Pass McGee. Still Dale Gordon. And trainer just hacks it anywhere. Beckford with the long throw. Fairbrother flicking it on, but it's gone behind. I think it would be a little bit unfair for either of the goalkeepers to lose a goal now at this stage, Martin. Both of them, Donaldson and Hayes, have played ever so well right throughout the game. And in fact, both sides have put so much into it that uh, I think a nil-nil draw at the end of the day would suit both sides. I think we'd all come away happy with that. Pushed by Fairbrother. <laughs> McGee with the free kick. Out from Seagraves. And the final whistle goes, England and Scotland share the Dentine Trophy after a goalless draw in which the Scotland captain, Tony Shepherd, gave an outstanding performance. But Scotland were grateful to two clearances off the line from their left-back, Brian McGee. And Dale Gordon for England created a fine chance that Darren Beckford couldn't convert and missed one himself. And Jim Morrow, the England manager, ends his 12-year reign in charge of the under-15 side with a nil-nil draw here that everyone has enjoyed. As Ian was saying earlier, it was a tremendous test for the players with the heat and with the emotion of a Wembley occasion. But a draw, I'm sure everyone would agree, a fair result. A final score then here at Wembley. England nil, Scotland nil, back to Dickey. Yes, England unable to get the revenge they wanted for that defeat in April in Kokodi. Uh, and certainly they had their chances in the second half. Anyway, I'm sure you enjoyed some of those skillful moments. We'll be back in just a few moments with the headlines.